planet Arrakis is so beautiful when the sun is low. Rolling over the sands, you can see spice in the air. The outsiders ravage our lands in front of our eyes. Their cruelty to my people is all I've known. What's to become of our world? A boy! <laughs> Duncan, can I trust you with something? Yes, always, you know that. I've been having dreams about a girl on Arrakis. I don't know what it means. Dreams make good stories. But everything important happens when we're awake. Who are you? Put on some muscle? I did? No. We are a house of Trades. There is no call we do not answer. There is no faith that we betray. Smile, Gurney. I am smiling. The Emperor asks us to bring peace to Arrakis. House of Trades accepts! I know you. There's only a way in my mind. You need to face your fears. Come with me. You need to be ready. You never met Harkonnens before. They're not human, they're brutal. The Duke suddenly sees too much. This is my dude. Kill them all. family off one by one. Let's fight like demons. Dad, what if I'm not the future of House Atreides? A great man doesn't seek to lead. He's called to it. But if your answer is no, You'll still be the only thing I ever needed you to be. My son. If anything happens, will you protect Paul? With my life. Only together can we stand a chance. Watching 30 movies. I'm back doing 30 podcasts. This is the ninth year of movie month. Please listen all June. All June. Don't know when I've been so blue Don't know what come over you You found someone And don't it make my brown eyes blue I'll be fine when you're gone Day 
30. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, movie nerds of all ages, this is it. This is the final day of movie month. Once again, I can say I did it. 30 movies, 30 podcasts, 30 days. Seven straight years of that, plus two years, 30 movies, 30 blog posts, 30 days. Nine years, 30 movies a year, 270 movies. And this year, for the second straight year, I finished movie month with a Denny Villeneuve movie. I'm sure I pronounced that incredibly wrong. Denny Villeneuve. Anyway, him, this guy. Yes, because tonight I just watched Dune or Dune 2021 or Dune Part 1. Last year was Blade Runner 2049. This is actually my third uh, movie of actually my fourth movie of his because I've I've watched Sicario and of course he he loves um Josh Brolin brings him back for Dune. I love uh I saw uh The Arrival. Nobody from there I think showed up. Blade Runner 2049. He said, "Hey, uh uh, uh, Batista, why don't you come over and be in my next movie, Dune. This was a long movie with a long history. Didn't Dune, wasn't Dune one of those movies where they say, was it, if this is the unfilmable movie, Un, you know, like you can't, uh, it's just too big of a movie to make. And yet this is the uh, second time I've seen a movie called Dune. The first one, well, let's be honest. I don't remember all that much. The year was 1984. Little Mikey was, you know, I was younger. I was probably still larger than most of my friends. And a space movie with, with the guy from the police? Okay, let's go. A bunch of us kids went. This is the year or a couple, the year after Return of the Jedi? So I think we thought, we don't know what we were getting. Maybe another cool, fun space movie. I don't remember what we got. I just remember, I think we left early. I remember kids throwing ice at each other. There was like five or six of us. Uh, I think my brother, Ryan, you might have been there. Danny, you might have been there. Maybe Dave, I don't remember. Um, And that might have been it. And someone was throwing ice, and I think I was laughing, but also afraid we were going to get in trouble. And I remember seeing Sting. I remember something with a hand, with a hand, putting a hand into a thing. I think I remember a bug. And that's it. That's all I remember. I don't think, I think this was like a notorious movie because it's maybe not that good. I don't know. Is it something that's a cult classic? Is it something that people like? Or was it just one of those things where it was like, what the hell was that? Now... Flash forward, I'm going to say five years later, because that's how math works, to 1989, and I start listening to a band called Iron Maiden. And I, um, very shortly after Break My Arm, and part of some of the gifts I got in the hospital were more Iron Maiden tapes. I've gone on to see them ten times in concert, going to see them again this October, and I don't think it was until recently till that I realized... In 1983, uh, this song from the album Peace of Mind called To Tame a Land.
just listen to some of the lyrics in this song. He is the king of all the land in the kingdom of the sands of the time tomorrow. He rules the sandworms and the freemen in a land amongst the stars of an age tomorrow. He is destined to be king. He rules over everything in a land called Planet Dune. Body water is your life, and without it you would die in the, pl- in the desert Planet Dune. And I don't think I even, un- I don't think I even made the connection. I just, I remember he- the, he is the kingdom of the land and the kingdom of the sand in the time tomorrow. And then I don't think I understood anything else he was saying. I don't know if I read the lyrics ever. Without a still suit, you would, you would fry on the sands so hot and dry in a world court called Arrakis. It is a land that's rich in spice, the sand riders and the mice that they call the Ma'adib. He is the Kwitsat Hadarak. He is born of Kaldoran and will take the Gom Jabbar. <laughs> he has the power to foresee or to look into the past. He is the ruler of the stars. The time will come for him to lay his claim his crown to to lay claim his crown, and then the foe, yes, they'll be cut down. You'll see, he'll be the best that there's been. Messiah is a prime, true leader of man. And when the time for judgment's at hand, don't fret, he's strong, he'll make a stand against evil and fright and fire and spread through the land. He has the power to make it all end. I might have just spoiled part two. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, one thing people don't realize about Iron Maiden is, yes, they're, they have, like, quote-unquote, uh, heavy metal music. It's hard rock. Um, it is loud, heavy stuff with big, big vocals, but it's extremely nerdy. They are extremely kind of like, uh, they, they do a lot of their songs on, on old, uh, on history and in literature. They have tons of nerdy songs that, you know, then they, it, then they'll prance around on stage with giant set pieces. I think Spinal Tap was almost kind of making fun of that a little bit. Um, but I love it. I love it. I love it. I've never heard this song played live. They won't play it live this year. It's from an eight. It's like a. It's like not even one of their more famous songs. I don't care. I still love it. I just never really knew what I was listening to, and then I realized, wow, I I know more about Doom than I realized subconsciously, but really not so. This movie. Shall we shall we talk specifically about this movie? Because I don't know much about Frank Herbert. What's funny is I'm reading a book right now from a guy named Kevin J. Anderson. It's called uh, en- Enemies and Allies. It's about Cold War time uh, in the 50s. But it also has to, just happens to have Batman and Superman in it. And I looked this guy up, and he's a pretty well-known sci-fi writer. And he's written Dune books with Frank Herbert's son. I was like, what is, what's going on in the world? And today, I just heard the Dune uh, part two is being delayed till November 2023. I'm like, my goodness gracious. It's like the world is knows that I'm watching Dune today. And they said, well, here's some, here's some thoughts on Dune. Here's some little coincidences. I just find that, I always find that kind of stuff funny. That, well, today I'm doing this and this is what's happening in the world. Obviously, the world wants you to listen to this podcast. This movie was long, especially for a part one. Two and a half hours. It literally took the story, I guess, and chopped it in half. So when you say Dune is, a, is an unfilmable movie, maybe it's because it needs to be a five-hour epic. And this is the first part. We've got a killer cast. We've got uh, is it Rebecca Ferguson plays the mother of Timothy Chalamet, whose father is Oscar Isaac, who has a, um, a warrior... Uh, played by Aquaman, Jason Momoa. He's got like a general played by uh, uh, Josh Brolin. Uh, Zendaya plays like this other um, from another, other from another, uh, like the, the Freeman. And they're also lit, led by Javier Bardem. And uh, did I get all the all the major players? And then even Stellan Skarsgård plays like this this weird uh, fat dude who can float around and stuff. There's just so many people in this picture, right? I got I got all the major players, I think. And then you think, oh, there's another guy. Um, so they so the whole thing is this the spice is this hot commodity. It is it's not. I think it can be used as a drug, but it's also like. It's almost like a, a rich crop, a, a, a um, staple. I can't think of the word, but it's something that is just 
use. It is a valuable commodity, a valuable resource, natural resource found on these the, these sand planets of Arrakis. Uh, but it just so happens that there are certain people on there that live there. There's these bad guys who want to take it over. And then there's an emperor who sends these people, uh, Oscar Isaac and his family and his people, to kind of manage the planet, oversee the spice trade. Um, what's weird is I just watched the Book of Boba Fett a few months ago, and there's worms in that, and there's spice in that. It spices a drug there. But I just thought, is is... is like, did George Lucas just steal some of the stuff and put it on Tatooine, which is also a desert planet? Um, and, you know, 20 years later, he's like, well, no, no one's going to read Dune. That was my George Lucas impression. I don't know. The, I mean, even maybe just call it something else. Call it, uh, call it, uh, sandy candy that you snort, you snort your sandy candy. I don't know. Uh, but in this movie, it's, it's almost like a, it seems like it's it's not just it's not frowned upon. It is a commodity that is used in the world. Um, but it comes to find out that they were basically sent there to fail and to be taken out. So Dave Batista and his uncle Stellan Skarsgård do take them out. But there's also this other thing going on where um, Timothy Chalamet, he's Paul, which is, doesn't sound like a, a very sci, sci-fi name. Sorry, Paul, if you're listening. Um, but he is the son of um, Oscar Isaac, who's this like chant, this duke, and he um, he's got this voice, this which is kind of like he can control things by saying, you know, give me the water, and they give you the water. It's like you have to obey him. Like the word of God that was in that comic book um, preacher. Uh, he has it. He got it from his mom. Now, I didn't realize till towards the end that that's his mom and his dad aren't husband and wife. He says, I should have married you. Later, they said, you're a concubine. So I thought, oh, she's just kind of his, like, concubine, for lack of a better, a lack of a, a second more in original word. But she's also a witch. But I'm not sure which witch she is. <laughs> Um, but I, I think she's a witch or, or works with witches. And the witch told uh, Stellan Skarsgård, you do whatever you want to uh, Oscar Isaac, but don't kill the, the mother's part of our tribe. So don't kill her. Don't kill the son. They don't care. They're going to try to do it anyway. But luckily they have the voice and they're yawning and they're, they escape using their powers. There's a lot in this two hour, half hour movie that I'm skimming over tremendously. But, um, I'm simplifying it. Oh, and at the same time, he is, it's like a Messiah thing where he, he's like, there's like a prophecy of a Messiah coming and it's, it's probably him, this guy. He like, he's able to, he knows things as if he's been lived, as he lived here his whole life. He's able to dream. He's able to tell the future. Like he, he met Zendaya. He saw Zendaya in her, in his dream before she was even like, in her, like he actually met her, but it was the dreams were, they weren't exact. So, like something happened where she stabs him in the dream, but he tr- he kind of was able to say, oh, well, that meant someone's going to give me a knife. It's not literal. Uh, they said in this dream, this this man is going to teach you. He's a friend who's going to show you the way. And then in reality. They fight to the death, and Paul kills this guy at the end. I'm assuming that's the end of him, and that's his kind of the first time he's killed someone. He's showing him this is what needs to happen. This is the way. This is the the his kind of his his becoming a man. That's what I got out of it. That's what I think we're supposed to get out of it. Um, Jason Momoa, you know, you you might think of him as this like you think of Khal Drogo. The first time I ever saw him on. Uh, Game of Thrones, but he is a personable guy. He's got a, funk, a funky name in this in the show, Duncan Idaho, which sounds like it should have been Bruce Willis's name in some, you know, early two thousands sci fi slash cop like B movie that went direct to, to Laserdisc. But 
these are all you know things from the book i'm assuming uh and he was he was great you know he's the warrior guy josh brolin was more like he was the general but he also he was i think he was quoting scripture quoting poetry i thought at one point josh brolin was going to turn i was like you got josh brolin there for a reason he is going to betray uh oscar isaac as far as I can tell, they, they eluded that trope. But I'm not sure what, what happened to him. There was this giant uh, war, this giant invasion. Uh, they got attacked. And you see Oscar Isaac almost die. He gets out. He ends up doing this cool thing where he, he has a poison tooth. You see um, this doctor actually betrayed him to get his wife back. That didn't work very well. But you don't see. You see what happens to Duncan Idaho. You don't see what happens to Josh Brolin, I don't think. I don't remember. So he could be back in part two. Uh, Javier Badem and Zendaya are going to be, uh, seem to be a larger part of part two. For the most part, Zendaya is just looking at you with those blue eyes. And she says a couple lines. Like in, at the end of this one, she's like, this is just the beginning. It's like, it better be because there hasn't, you haven't done much. Um, so... Like, Dune is not just... Dune is like a... In the sci-fi, you know, um, literature world, Dune is like a staple. Not something I've read, but it's almost like one of the greats. You think of, like, fantasy, you think Middle Earth, you think sci-fi, and this is one of the ones you think of. Dune. Uh, there's been a, punch, a bunch of books. I'm, I think books are still happening. I... Part of me... I thought that there was going to be an HBO Max series also kind of developed out of out of this in this world, this version of Dune. Oh, yanni, yanni. Um, but overall, long movie, long. And you have to make some of these movies long. It didn't do tremendous at the box office because this was one of the ones that came out at, on HBO Max the same day. Uh, obviously, I didn't watch it till today. And I think Denny Villeneuve was like upset about that. And I, and I understand directors being upset about that, but you know who did it right? Tom Cruise. They're like, Oh, you can't, we can't release it. Then we'll just hold it. We'll just hold it. We'll just hold it. Oh, Tom, uh, we'll just hold uh, Top Gun. We'll hold it again. Don't worry. We'll just delay. Don't worry. We'll wait. We don't care. We'll do it. And then it comes out and makes a billion freaking dollars. And it's like the biggest movie in the world. Some of Warner brothers just said, screw it. We'll take the loss. We want to get these out there to the world. And I think, I'm guessing part of that is like because we want to be on schedule to make the next one. Now, we'll see what happens. They are making the next one. We'll see if that does good in the box office. Uh, I feel like it probably should do all right, um, I think. But even if it doesn't, who cares? It's getting made. So the people who liked it, me, you probably, we get to see it anyway. So it's like who cares if it does a box office? It's not going to be a part three. That's not the point. Uh so overall, uh, for a movie that's quote unquote unfilmable, for a movie that's two and a half hours with no real ending because it's only the the first half of something, it still has a good pace to it. And you know, at the beginning, I'm like, there is a lot being thrown at you. All these different names, I had to put the subtitles on. All these different words, the haraka takapaka. I don't know what the hell they're saying. Uh, and even reading, I'm like, I don't know what the hell that means. Different, different planets different that you just kind of gotta you have to go with the flow you don't have to, you're not studying this i'm not writing a book review on it so it's just like just go with it that's a planet that's a planet these are the good guys these are the bad guys i think it was like like five minutes before um before oscar isaac died that i i saw his name was leto i'm like what it is oh i didn't know that uh so you just kind of if you just l look at the overarching story it's pretty easy to follow if you get marred down in the details, it is friggin' confusing. But I also wonder, for the hardcore uh, doonies, <laughs> for, the, for the people who love the book, did this, like, bring it to life? And I wonder if they thought that in 1984, but, like, there's these, they call them thopters, these helicopters that kind of like uh, dragonflies. Very cool. I'm assuming they're right out of the book. It must have been amazing to see the sandworms. We, we never got a really good view of the sandworm. And, and the sandworm at some point stopped and focused on uh, and focused on Timothy Chalamet, Paul, and didn't, didn't eat him. So I wonder if that's something uh, where he was 
you know, the Messiah. But we also at the end see this see this person riding a a uh, sandworm, and that's when they say uh, sand power. I was like, oh, there's the sand power right there. Um, and I thought I was like, don't they ride these worms? I don't know if I was thinking of that or thinking of Beetlejuice, but it was um, the the effects. I love effects where you they don't necessarily look digital. But you know they are. Where it looks like there's some there's some texture to it, some substance, uh, and terrific. Obviously, uh, this director always delivers with stunning visuals, especially on my 13 inch laptop hiding in my mother in law's computer room. Uh, you know, just top notch stuff. Um, overall, terrific movie. Again, as I said, and, and a killer cast, and it flew by. Was it was it nominated for anything? I don't even know if it was. I'm going to check right now. Going to go to IMDb. Going to go to the page of Denny. Click on Dune 27. I mean 2021. And go to the awards section. It's so hard to find in IMDb sometimes. Awards. Just If you go to the IMDb page afterwards, just click the... Just click awards. Uh, just type awards after the number. So like you'll see title slash long ass digits slash now I'm just going to type awards because I, I I defy you to find it on the actual page um, oh it won a bunch of Oscars best sound best achievement of visual effects best achievement of production design uh, best achievement in music written for motion picture best achievement in film editing best achievement in cinematography and it was nominated for picture of the year makeup costume design and adapted screenplay that makes me happy because if it seems like quite a a quite a film, and it was cool seeing Dune win stuff. That's right, I can't remember them winning. I mean, let's be honest, the Oscars were a little um, you, you you get distracted, um, you know, like you got distracted, like you got slapped in the face when when you, when you think about the Oscars. That was a that was a terribly unsubtle unsubtle joke. Uh, that's it, my friends. I'm done. I'm so tired. I still need to get the picture up. It is 10:59. Uh, I'm in 1049. I have an hour and 10 minutes to, to complete the mission. Uh, so it's not fully done yet, but it will be done soon. But I just want to say this was fun. 30 movies again. Um, none for the third year in a row, none at the movie theater. I haven't been to the movies in the theater in, since the rise of Skywalker, since the last Star Wars motion picture. Um, obviously... I thought maybe I'd get back this year. At one point, I thought the Multiverse of Madness would bring me back. Then it showed up on Disney+. Plus. Then I watched it, and thank God I didn't go to the theater for that one. I thought maybe maybe, um, maybe Top Gun, but that didn't happen either. Because by the time um, I, ha- I was on vacation, I'm already up here in New Hampshire. Ah, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. What a time to be alive. But tomorrow's July. July 1st. That's usually how it works. At the end of June, the next day is July 1st. And um, I just am thrilled to be able to do this again. It is so much fun to catch up on movies, movies that I want to see, movies that I wasn't sure about, movies that I was really happy about, movies that surprised me for, in a good way and surprised me in a, oh my God, this wasn't that good way. Uh, and sometimes it just there's just B or C level movies that I want to see and I want to catch up on. And that's going to happen. Uh, they can't all be extraction and, and old Henry, but thank God they're not all eternals. And uh, no, I'm not going to say that one, Chris. I'm not going to. I'm, I'm that. I'm not going to put that in the negative side. So, so don't worry. I won't. I don't want to get the wrath of Chris. That's not a negative. Actually, it's not a negative. It's just not. It's right in the middle. Right in the middle. Um, with things like happily, that was kind of right in the middle too. Um, I'm done. I'm done. Oh, Nightmare Alley, too. That was a great one. Uh, a lot of a lot of fun movies. A lot of big movies that I hadn't seen that I that I caught up on. A couple little movies that I wanted to see. And, uh, yeah. That's it, my friends. So, goodbye. Thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Geek mentality isn't going away. It used to be that you wouldn't hear from me for another year. But there'll still be plenty of things we'll be doing. Um... Obviously, you'll hear from me on August 1st. I still want to do Batman. I still want to do Superman movies. Uh, and in the fall, in right around Christmas, in the winter, 
uh, sitcom All You Faithful will be back. And, of course, in March, we have Marchie McFly 3. And then back in June, year 10 of Movie Month. Shocking, right? Absolutely shocking. So, my friends, thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Geek Mentality. The uh, website is fans.experts.com. The Facebook page is fans.experts. This is fans.experts movie month, year nine, in the books. It's done. I'm out of here. Happy June, everybody. Happy June 30th. 30 movies down. 30 movies done. 270 movies since this whole effing thing started. Uh, I'll see you soon, everybody. Until next time, thank you once again for listening. And I don't want to be too loud because everyone else is sleeping. Here is my theme song. This is my podcast. I made it. Geek Mentality is what I named it. And I think you should listen and subscribe. Because I'm kind of funny and awesome. I think that I'm worth your time and I'm kind of handsome. My mom says, please listen and please subscribe. At least listen to this episode. Fans not experts. I did it.